and a warm welcome, dearest heart, to the power and the glory that is the Audio Fireman and this week's review, which is a headphone amp from a German company called Violetric. It's called the HPA V222, and this unit costs £1,060. Now, last week, a German Class A amplifier made a guest appearance in the review video for the Yellowhorn Power Amplifier. Well, we maintain that Teutonic vibe this week with, as I say, another German company, Violetric. This is the very first time I've ever grabbed a product from this outfit. But look, before we go any further, I think we should just dive in right now with a gay abandon into the closer look section. This is a compact balanced headphone amplifier with single ended connections thrown in for good measure. Wrapped in an aluminium chassis, it spans 170mm by 65 by 252mm. Now there's attention to detail with this one. Pushed along via a toroidal transformer, the unit offers four symmetrical amplifier stages at the output stage. Two for single ended mode and all four for the balanced route. Its power handling means that it can easily cope with a wide range of headphones, matching just about any impedance you're likely to throw at it. Looking at the front fascia, on the left you have an Alps RK27 volume pot, a toggle switch for single-ended and balanced modes, plus outputs for 6.35mm single-ended, 4-pin XLR, and a pentacon socket. The right hand side provides a push power button plus an indicator light. On the rear, on the left, is an IEC power socket, XLR inputs, single ended inputs, and a range of dip switches to select, as the company has it pre game. Now, that sounds like a misnomer to me. Think of the dip switches as providing either gain boost or gain deficit from a high of plus 18 decibels all the way down to minus 18. And there are steps in between plus and minus six and plus and minus 12. Useful for different headphone or earphone designs. The best way to get this gain boost or deficit going, select one and listen and tweak and listen until you find the right setting for you. In other words, use your ears. Now yes, I fully understand that the use of dip switches lowers overall costs and when you're running a limited build budget every penny counts. But at this price point, well, I would have preferred to have had either a toggle switch or switches or a rotary selector knob to do those gain alterations. But well, I suppose I should be grateful that these dip switches are not hidden underneath the chassis. So, small mercies, hey. And that's basically the techie side of this product, this headphone amp. So, how does this thing sound? Well, let's go straight to the sound quality tests and we will find out. To begin these sound tests, I began with one of the other parts of my vinyl collection from Serge Gainsbourg, the satirical, I suppose you'd call it, Rock Around the Bunker, which reflected his time in occupied France as a child. This particular album was released a little bit later in 1975. This is a pseudo lounge bubblegum 50s pop outing which was rather intriguingly infused with the cream of uk session men people like alan hawkshaw or alan parker and jim lawless even claire pink floyd torrey she was involved now i played a track called zigzag avec toi 
and brought in my similarly priced Icon Audio HP8 Mark II valve-based headamp as a kind of reference alongside my Sennheiser HD800 headphones, which sports a 6.35mm single-ended termination and in that went to the front of the 222. I noted immediately how solid state the 222 sounded. There was none of the soft, open and delicate tones of the Icon Audio valves here. No surprise, that's true, but worth stating anyway. The 222 offered a generally, if not exactly, balanced output because it lent a little bit towards a higher frequency hardening. Only slightly, I must emphasize, there was nothing egregious here. In fact, those who like a more forceful presentation will love the HPA V222. This unit offered a slightly harder edge on the very limits of the upper mid-range and a slightly forced treble response as well. Again, I must repeat here, the emphasis was slight. So, just a touch. Even so, it gave the sound a slightly tougher personality to the delivery alongside a more impactful bass response. In short, in this mode, the sound was fine. Nothing amazing, but certainly passable. I then switched to Pentacon, the balanced output, and the Sennheiser HD 660S headphones. Now, via the Pentacon socket, the sound retained slight hardness around the upper mids, but across the rest of the soundstage, the frequencies were softened. Bass was fastened a touch with extra weight, while treble, well, that did lose a little bit of its clarity. It sounded a little bit rolled off, you might say. So far then, the overall sound output of the 222 was satisfactory, I would say. Now, I tried a different tack now, and I unplugged the single-ended cables from the 222, and instead, I plugged in my balanced cables onto the rear, and I tried again. And this time, I put the 800s back in, the single-ended headphones. And I gotta say, this was more like it. The soundstage opened up, the noise floor dropped, and there was a new level of clarity which entered the fray. Treble, well, that offered more fragility now. There was a tambourine that could be tracked by the ear for the first time, but there remained a slight edge to the upper mids. So, I went a bit further, and out came the 800s, in went the 660Ss, so now we had a fully balanced output. And this was the best offering of all the options thus far. The fully balanced chain produced a more even-handed performance. The 660Ss in and of themselves slightly emphasized bass, just a little bit, so we had a bit of that. The bass guitar was more forceful now, percussion had an effective impact, but there was enough detail from the upper mids and the treble to fully engage a tapping toe or two. And that's basically the review of this particular headphone amp, and I think we should encapsulate all of that, bring a bit of context into some final thoughts, I'll give you some pros and cons, and then a rating. sure, you don't get the delicacy and fragility of the upper mids that my valve reference provides, but that was to be expected, considering I was listening to an essentially solid state design via the Violetric. Now, what I almost forgot to tell you about, so I'll do it now, were my CD tests, and I did put in a copy of Pink Floyd's The Wall in my CD player, and I gave that a go. And I tested that with the fully balanced output using the 660S headphones. And this headphone amplifier, well, it just loved the sound. That is, the HPA V222 lapped up rock authority. 
It adored mighty drum strikes. It positively worshipped power chords and screaming vocals. It bathed in heavy bass lines. It drank the blood of ripping guitar solos. And I have to say, I ramped up the volume during such moments and I fully air guitared David Gilmour all over my listening room. The V222 was the epitome of epic during high energy rock. I'll tell you this, if the 222 could have climbed up on my shoulders, stretched out its arms in the air and offered peace signs to and fro, it would. Oh, it would. Via dynamic and high energy music, the 222 gave a greater sense of solidity and power from the lower frequencies. Bass was dominant and weighty, while cymbal taps reminded you more that these things were made from heavy pieces of metal. That's the sound that replaced the former fragility and delicacy from my valve reference. So, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about personal choice and musical choice. If you want fragility from your favourite singer-songwriter, classical scores, jazz quartets, then look elsewhere. But, but, if you want a sense of weight and power and impact in your music, the HPA V222 will give you that in spades, and the two of you will live happily ever after. Pros and cons. In the good section, the balanced inputs, they made all the difference, as did, in this occasion and this review, the Pentacon output. I really liked that combo. I was very happy with the relatively compact design, and considering all the features, this is a relatively compact box. And on a broad level, I liked the overall balanced sound. In the bad section, well, I wasn't that impressed with the dip switches. A control with a bit more finesse would have been nice, something easier to operate would have been useful. Also, the overall performance of single-ended sound was, well, it wasn't actually bad, but it wasn't actually amazing, it was okay. Which is why I'm going to give this box, the V22 from Violetric, two ratings. I'm going to give a single-ended mode rating, which I'm going to give 7 out of 10, and I will give a balanced mode rating. And for that, I'm going to give this one an award, a groovy, an 8 out of 10. Congratulations to Violetric. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this particular video. Down below, if you can, before you go, click on the like and subscribe buttons. That will help this channel enormously, and I thank you for your support. Further down, I'll put a link to the company, Violetric, and the UK distributor of the same. And there are also other links to my website, which is new and shiny, and you need to check it out if you haven't done so already. There's all kinds of stuff over there you won't see here. And my Patreon page, uh, there's a Hi-Fi News Etc, a new one this week, so check that out now. Should be over there now. In fact, it will be over there now. Also, lots of other stuff over there, lots of exclusives. You also see early viewings of everything on this channel over there, and so on. Also, my Facebook group. We have a fair sized community over there of, whew, how many is it? About 12,000 people. So, very happy if you want to come over and check out the link down yonder. I'll be back on Friday, I think, with a music alert video, just telling you what new stuff has arrived on my desk. So, I'll be sharing that with you. Vinyl, CDs. If there's any books, if there's any tapes, I'll show those as well. I hope to have your company, and until then, folks, bye-bye for now.